You're listening to the Unstoppable Teen Podcast, episode number eight. Welcome to Unstoppable Teen, the podcast for teenagers, parents, and teachers. My name is Kevin Mincher. Every week, we will bring you an inspirational person or message to help you experience more success and happiness. Thanks for hanging out with us. Let's get this party started. Hello, Unstoppable Nation, it's Kevin here. Welcome to the show. In this episode, we're going to be covering a controversial subject because it's all about sex and teenagers. Last week was Sexual Health Week, and we had all kinds of discussion and deliberation here at Unstoppable Teen about whether we should do a show on this particular subject. I mean, if you think about it, what teenagers want to listen to a 38-year-old bald guy talking about sex? On the other hand, do you really want to get your sex knowledge, sexual information, and how to keep yourself safe and healthy through playground rumours and school myths from people that have had little to no experience in this particular subject? It's a topic that's really close to my heart because, much to my embarrassment when I was younger, my mum used to work for the National Health Service. That wasn't, that wasn't the embarrassing thing. I mean, I was very proud of her for the things that she did to help people with their health and their well-being. But the embarrassing bit was that my mum used to go into schools to have uh, contraception discussions with teenagers. Indeed, one day, unannounced, I didn't know it, my mum turned up at my own school. (laughs) You really don't want to experience this. It was one of the most painfully embarrassing experiences of my life where it got to break time, you know, recess, and I'm standing in the queue to go and get some snacks and re-energise myself, and one of my friends comes over and says, your mum just taught us how to put a condom on a banana. Brilliant. So embarrassing. So we had a very open dialogue at home about sex and relationships and contraception and your health and your well-being. I know that in some families, people don't want to talk about it. And obviously, if you don't want to hear about sex and teenagers and how to be healthy and how to keep yourself safe, then please don't listen to this episode. If, on the other hand, you know you want your family to have more discussions about this, then keep listening. I just think that if we're going to help young people have great lives, we can't ignore this really important topic. Let's be honest, it's, it's during our teenage years that we really start to become aware of our own sexuality and we start to become interested in other people that we're attracted to and we start to experiment. And if you make some poor decisions, there can be some hugely catastrophic consequences. If on the other hand you make well-informed decisions, then there's really nothing to fear and you can keep yourself happy, healthy and well. So after that deliberation here at Unstoppable Team, we decided what the heck, let's go for it. We hope that people aren't offended about the fact that we're going to talk about teenagers and sex. And like I said, if that is offensive to you, then please switch off now and don't carry on. If on the other hand, you'd like to start some conversations you know, amongst your friends if you're a teenager, or even just get something settled in your own thoughts about when is the right time to have sex? When should I not have sex? And all those kinds of things, then, then stay tuned and keep listening. Maybe you're a parent and you could use this episode as a discussion point you could you know either invite your child your teenager to listen to it and then talk about it separately or maybe if you're open like my mum was with me then you could maybe listen to it together uh, pause it throughout and uh, have different discussions as we go through different sections here ultimately this is about wanting to keep you safe happy healthy and well too many times over the last two decades that I've been working in schools have I heard some really terrible stories, either from teenagers directly or from the teachers that work with them. Indeed, in the school in Doncaster where I grew up, I went to a school called Edlington Comprehensive School. It changed its name to Edlington School and now it's since changed its name again to Sir Thomas Wharton Community College. And when I was there in my year group when I was 15 years old, one of my own classmates got herself pregnant. When I say got herself pregnant, obviously, you know, somebody else had to join in that act to help her become pregnant. But it was shocking news for the school. And of course, she then, as a teen mum, 
ended up missing massive amounts of her education that then might have set her back when it came to her future career and so forth. I personally was 19 years of age when I lost my virginity. I always find that a really interesting turn of phrase, lost my virginity. It's like, you don't lose it, do you? I mean, it's like, you, you lose your keys, you know, where you come back to your house and you think, where, where are my keys? Where, where are they? They were in my pocket. I've, I've lost them. It's not like your virginity's in your pocket and then suddenly you lose it. <laughs> you make some choices, invariably, that lead to the experience of you not being a virgin anymore. And for me... That happened when I was 19. So even though I'd been having open dialogue and open conversations with my parents throughout my teenage years, it was right towards the end, before I became 20, that I actually had sex for the first time. A lot of people say, well, you shouldn't talk about sex to teenagers. Um, But apparently, when you look at the research, it seems that the more open conversations you have, the more free you feel to express yourself in this area where it's not suppressed, like it's a dirty thing that should never be talked about. When there's that mood of should never talk about it, it's off limits, you tend to experience higher levels of teenage pregnancy rates and you tend to experience higher levels of sexually transmitted infections. But where there's a more liberal approach to talking about sex and sexuality in places like the Netherlands, for example then you have lower levels of teenage pregnancy and you have lower levels of sexually transmitted infections. So I think talking about this topic openly and freely, getting rid of some of the myths and the misunderstandings is really important. It gives teenagers confidence and equips them with the knowledge to make better decisions. As you know, I've been working with teenagers and with schools for a very long time now. Over the last 20 years, I've worked in more than 250 schools, colleges and universities. And in that time, more than 300,000 young people have completed my personal development and life coaching programs for teenagers. You won't be surprised that when you work with that many people over that length of time, you start to recognise a pattern of common problems and issues that keep coming up, questions that keep getting asked, and help that young people are searching for. And often, this topic of sex and sexuality keeps coming up. And for my liking, it's it's not talked about enough. And it gets to the point where young people start experimenting before they've educated themselves. And that's dangerous. I worked at a school in my home city here in Sheffield just a couple of years ago where tragically I walk into school one day and discover that a group of 14 and 15 year old students have filmed themselves performing sex acts on on themselves and on each other. That video footage went viral and you can imagine the damaging consequences to their own reputation and to the people who then circulated that footage of underage children doing things that frankly in my opinion they shouldn't have been doing. So we're going to cover some really difficult subjects here, um, but we're doing it with the purpose of wanting to empower young people to help them make better decisions so they can keep themselves healthy and that they can keep themselves safe and they can have a brilliant future ahead of themselves. I have some good news for you. Uh, Some research was published by Harvard University recently that shows that today's teenagers are having less sex than any other teenage generation that went before them. I find that quite remarkable because we live, I think, in an over-sexualized world where lots of TV shows are about dating and first dates and celebrity dates. And then we look at music videos. The amount of flesh that's on show, you could almost give it an X rating. But it's become normalized for young women and, and even men to reveal parts of their body that I'm not so sure that they should be on music TV videos or even shown in certain movies. Add to that the wide availability of pornography, where by just typing in a few simple keywords into a search engine, you can have access to stuff that you're thinking, does that really happen? Is that normal? But adults have created this media world and online world that teenagers are now starting to think is normal. So I find it remarkable that in that context, less teenagers today are having sex than any of the previous generations. 
So here's the thing for teenagers that are listening. If your mates are bragging on the school bus or when you're hanging out with them about all these different things that they've done, you might just want to have a little bit of a question mark in the back of your mind about whether they've actually done it. Because the research shows that the chances are they haven't. That's the good news. Sex amongst teenagers is lower than it ever has been before. And I don't know whether TV shows like Teen Mum that's been on MTV have got something to do with that. You know, when you start to look at the consequences that can happen as a result of having sex, maybe that's one of the reasons why more teenagers are putting it off until later in their life. I don't know. But what I do know is this. According to the same research from Harvard University, whilst teenagers are having less sex, sadly, when they do have the sex, they're having more unprotected sex than any previous generation. They're not using contraception. They're not using condoms. They're not using the pill. They're not using the coil or other forms of contraception that are widely available, which increases the risks, obviously, of teenage pregnancy and the transference of sexually transmitted infections. So what I want to do in the rest of this episode is answer the questions that teenagers ask me and whether that's the questions that they've asked me in person in school, like, when should I have sex? Or as I got a message recently from Kira in Albany, New York, where her boyfriend keeps asking her to have sex, but she doesn't feel like she's ready yet. So how should she approach things? So let's answer those questions. So let's go after that first question of when should I have sex? Well, frankly, it's not for me or anybody else to tell you when you should be having sex. That's for you to decide. It's it's your life, it's your body, it's your emotions, it's your soul. It's up to you to decide. So let me give you four little bullet points, four little ideas, four guides, if you like, to help you make the right decisions so that you know when you're happy to proceed or indeed not to proceed. We don't want situations like Kira in Albany is finding where her boyfriend keeps asking her and she feels like she's under pressure. And if she hasn't got things clear in her own mind, she's at risk of doing things that she doesn't want to do or she doesn't feel she's ready for yet. We don't want that to happen to you. So here's four things that you need to consider before deciding to have sex. First of all, I believe that you should not have sex if you're feeling under pressure to have sex. And that pressure can come from any situation. It could be like with Kira, where one boyfriend keeps asking and nagging and even bullying, you know? Well, if, if you're not going to do that, then I'm going to leave you. I'm going to go and date somebody else instead. They're trying to manipulate you, trying to put pressure on you. And that's not right. Frankly, if they're taking that approach, they're really not the kind of person that you want to be sharing the most intimate parts of you with. So if you feel under pressure to have sex, I want to say that's not a good time for you to be having sex. And that pressure might not come from an individual. It might come from your peer group. It might be that you feel that everybody else is having more sexual experiences. Maybe they're talking about kissing their boyfriend or experimenting in other ways with their girlfriend. And that social peer group is causing a pressure. I know this was true for me. Like I said earlier on, I was 19 years old when I lost my virginity. And I felt at that point in time that every one of my other mates had already had sexual experiences before me. And it, I felt like I was under pressure. But the danger was that I would then put myself at risk and my health at risk. And I needed to just trust myself, maintain my own self-worth, and have that experience when I was good and ready. So don't ever let any individual, any group, or even the media pressure you into doing something that you don't feel you're ready for yet. Here's the second time when you're not ready to have sex, when you shouldn't have sex, is when you're under the influence of alcohol or drugs. This is a big decision. Every single time you have sex, the ultimate consequence of it can be the creation of life and the cause of your own death. Now, of course, there's a lot of pleasure to be had. There's a lot of love to be expressed. There's a lot of passion to be experienced. And they're nice consequences of having sex. However, if things don't go to plan when you're in that experience of doing the jiggy jiggy, if you know what I mean, ultimately, you could end up pregnant and you could become the father or you could become the mother of a child that you weren't ready to have yet. So you can create the birth of new life. 
And also, if you sleep with somebody that has an illness or a disease that they may not even know that they've got, the ultimate consequence of that act could be the causation of your own death, if you were to pick up something like HIV AIDS, for example. So, when you're under the influence of alcohol or drugs, your decision-making becomes impaired. You can't think fully, logically, and rationally. And if you're in a position where you're under the influence of drugs or alcohol, I'm going to say to you that you're not in a place where you can make a good decision about what's right for your life. So I encourage you to say no if somebody wants to have sex with you, if you're under the influence of alcohol or drugs. The third time when it might not be appropriate to uh, have sex is if you're doing it to feel loved. Unfortunately, it's a growing trend right now amongst youngsters and particularly amongst teenage girls uh, to have low levels of self-esteem. And self-esteem is something that comes from inside of you. It's how you think about yourself and it's about how you feel about yourself. If you have self-respect, if you value yourself, if you think highly of yourself, or another way of putting it is, If you love yourself, I don't mean in an arrogant way, but you appreciate yourself, you're grateful for who you are. If you have that feeling inside that you like yourself, then that's a good location to find your self-esteem and to feel that self-love. Sadly, many human beings, this is not just teenagers, but many human beings look to the outside world to feel loved. That if my mum or my dad praises me, then I'll feel loved. If my boyfriend gives me a hug or my girlfriend tells me she loves me, then I'll feel loved. And sadly, many teenagers make the step into the bedroom and decide to have sex when they're not ready for sex because they're craving this experience of wanting to feel loved. And if I go and have sex, then I'll be loved. No, 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 you won't. Having sex is not the way to discover love. You feel love first, outside of sexuality, outside of the experience of having sex. And that is where the best feelings of love and self-esteem and self-respect come from. When you have a complete compatibility and two people love each other equally, then bringing that love together amplifies the love and makes you feel better. But if you're feeling empty and you're feeling low and you're thinking that the way to make things better is to go and have sex with somebody, then you're seriously mistaken. So I would say to you, don't have sex if you're doing it in order to feel loved. The fourth and the final time when you should not have sex, and by the way, these are in no order of importance. I think they're all as equally important as each other. The fourth one is a big one. And that is that you do not have sex when there is no consent. In other words, if you are not consenting and somebody is forcing themselves on you, scream loudly, poke them in the eye, kick them between the legs, do whatever you've got to do to get yourself out of that situation. If you're not giving consent, do not proceed. Of course, the same is true in reverse. It might be that you're attracted to somebody. You could even be dating them for a while and you have decided that you'd like to take things a step further. And if you do not have consent from the boy or the girl that you're dating, you cannot proceed. In the very least, you would be charged with sexual assault. In the very worst case scenario, you could be charged with rape. Now, a lot of people get confused about this subject of, well, when do I have consent and when do I not have consent? Well, it's very simple. As you're with your partner and if you've both had conversations together about, I'm ready for this, yeah, I'm ready for it, are you ready for it too, yeah, I'm ready for it, let's do this together, then you have consent. You have to have that dialogue. And then I encourage you to do this. When you're about to have sex, maybe for the first time or for the next time, you've got to check that they do want to proceed. So just before you go through with the act and before you start having sex together, just ask them the question, are you sure you want to do this right now? And if they say yes, you have consent. If they don't say yes, or if they say no, if there's no answer, you don't have consent and you can't proceed. And by the way, just because 
you had sex with somebody last week doesn't mean you have to have sex with them this week. Or just because they said yes and you did it a month ago doesn't mean that you have the right to assume that you have consent this time because you want to do it again. Every single occasion that you decide to have sex or any form of sexual contact with another person, you have to get consent. You have to ask them and they need to ask you, are you cool with this? Yes, then proceed. If the consent is not there, back off. Because if you don't back off, you could end up like some of those very high profile teenage cases over the last 12 months where you end up on a sexual assault charge and you're in jail or you can end up on a rape charge and you don't want to go there. Your life is as good as over when you're in that kind of a situation. Because even even when you've served the time, you've now got a police record that prevents you from travelling internationally, that prevents you from applying for your dream jobs, and really, is one night or one day or one experience worth all of that damage just because you didn't get consent? So folks, there we have it. The four times when you should not have sex. When you're feeling under pressure, when you're under the influence of alcohol or drugs, if you're doing it in order to feel loved, and if there is no consent, then please do not proceed. If all of those things are taken into account and you decide that you and your partner, your boyfriend or girlfriend, are going to have a sexual experience, then, and I'm not encouraging this, I am going to say to you that same thing that my mum said to me. I remember I was 16 years of age and I was going on holiday to Spain with a friend of mine called Paul. I remember I was packing my suitcase and putting my swimming shorts in there and my t-shirts and my sunglasses and my mum came in. I'll never forget it. I was 16 years of age. She came in with a brown paper bag and she said to me, son, I'm not encouraging you to do so, but if you do, I just want to make sure you're safe. I was like, what are you talking about, mum? She said, just pack this, put it in your bag and share them with Paul. And I was like, what is she talking about? And I remember opening up, looking inside this brown paper bag and there was like a dozen condoms there. And I was like, oh no, my mum's just given me condoms. On the other hand, I'm chuffed that my mum valued me so much that she wanted to make sure I was safe. Of course, I nor Paul didn't use any of those condoms on that holiday. And as you know, I was 19 before they were ever needed. So I'm not encouraging you to go out there and have sex. If you are going to do it, please make sure that you keep yourself safe. And my philosophy on that is that two locks are always safer than one. You know, you know your door on your house, two locks are safer than one. You know, if you've got a deadbolt as well as a latch, you know, if you've got a Yale as well as a key, you know, two locks are safer than one. And what I mean by that when it comes to contraception, don't assume that your partner has taken care of it. Don't assume that she's taking the pill or don't assume that he's wearing the condom. No form of contraception is 100% safe. None of them. None of them have any guarantees. So with that in mind, if you're the girl, get yourself some contraception and look after yourself. If you're the guy, also get yourself some contraception and look after yourself. And just before we wrap things up, if you have ever had any form of unprotected sex, please please, please go and get yourself a health check. And whether that was full sex, whether it was oral sex, whether it was contact, don't care what kind of sexual contact it was, if you were unprotected, there is a chance that you have picked up a disease, an illness, and you could pass that on to other people. And we don't want that to happen. So go and get yourself booked in for a full health screening. Make sure that you haven't got anything that you shouldn't have so that if in future you do have sex, you won't be passing it on to somebody unexpected. I mean, there's some horrific things out there like gonorrhea, chlamydia. I mean, you can keep naming them hepatitis. You, 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 you don't want you don't want to go there. So make sure that your health is in good check now. Go do that. And then protect it with all of your might and all of your will for the rest of your days. Well, I hope you found this subject, even though it might have been controversial to talk about sex and relationships, with it being Sexual Health Week, we felt we needed to do something to help young people protect their health and to protect their well-being. 
If you think your friends could benefit from this episode and it could start a discussion within the family or within school or with the friendship group, please share it on social media. And of course, uh, if you've got any questions of your own, concerns, things that you want us to help you with, then send us a message. You can do that via social media. And of course, we're on the normal channels of Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You'll find us at Unstoppable Teen. Or of course, you can send us your questions via email to podcast at unstoppableteen.com. Again, that's podcast at unstoppableteen.com. And we'll be sure to answer your questions in future episodes. Before I say goodbye, I just want to let you know that here at Unstoppable Teen, we're fully committed to doing whatever we can to help young people experience more success and more happiness in their lives. Of course, we do that through our podcast and through our blog articles that we publish every week. This stuff costs us a lot of money to create. And if you feel that there's value in what we do and you want us to keep doing it, we'd really appreciate it if you go to our website and make a donation. Every pound, every dollar that gets donated goes into creating more educational resources to help young people experience a better future. So please go to unstoppableteen.com forward slash donate if you found this episode useful and if you'd like us to produce more shows throughout the weeks, months and years ahead. As always, we're incredibly grateful and appreciative that you listen to our show and really the main messages here for sex and teenagers is this. Don't ever let anybody else force you into a situation you don't want to go to. And please create an environment in your friendships, in your family and in your school where you can talk openly and freely about this subject so you can educate yourselves and each other and so you can become empowered to make better decisions that will ultimately keep you healthy and that will keep you safe. Thanks for listening. I look forward to seeing you next week when we'll help you become truly unstoppable. Bye for now.